Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Following on from my A-level chemistry experience video, today's video is all about my experience of AQA A-level biology. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jade. I have just finished my A-levels in the UK and I did maths, biology and chemistry. I am actually going on to study biology at university but that does not mean that I found it an easy ride um, or that I loved every aspect of the A-level as I will get into. But yeah, if you are considering whether to take it or thinking of dropping it or whatever, I really hope this does help you. The first thing I'd say is that I think there is definitely a considerable jump between GCSE biology and A-level biology. I think there's a huge jump in terms of content. Like there is so much content in A-level biology. It is insane. And the way that we would discuss it in class is we would say that like one sub chapter, like one lesson of biology is almost like half a chapter of GCSE or like a whole chapter of some of the chapters at GCSE. There are a lot of new words. I remember my teacher saying like, oh, are any of you doing A-level German? Because you might as well be learning a new language if you're doing biology. <laughs> so yeah, each sub chapter is dense. There's a lot to remember and a lot of the concepts get more difficult. But at the same time, you do build on your GCSE knowledge. So for example, genetic engineering, basically you just go into way more depth with it. Things that you already know, like diffusion and osmosis, I think you do in GCSE as well. Um, you still use those concepts, you still apply them. You just apply them in harder scenarios. <laughs> I think personally, the way that my brain works, I'm generally better at kind of wordy things anyway. So for me, the like learning all these new words and having to remember them and recall them. I personally didn't mind that that much, but I know a lot of people in my class really struggled with that aspect of biology was just all the words and how similar a lot of the words are. Like, yes, you have meiosis and mitosis, but you also have glycogen, glucagon, glucose, gluconeogenesis, glycolysis, glycogenolysis, like just like lots of similar things with often very different meanings. Number two is that you need to consolidate consistently because of how much content there is. Every few frees, I would dedicate a free purely to consolidating my biology knowledge, which meant going through flashcards I've made or going back and doing questions for chapters which weren't immediately relevant to what I was doing right then in lessons, but just I had to do it to keep my knowledge up because I think it's very easy for you to think that you understood a chapter while you were doing it, then neglect it and move on to all these other chapters you're doing in lessons, never come back to look at those old things that you did. And then when it comes to big exams and you suddenly have a lot of content to revise, you really need a very strong grounding in those chapters, the early chapters. So just consolidate them. Even if you feel like you know them, consolidate them anyway. <laughs> and going along with that is the importance of making flashcards as you go, or just like whatever resource you tend to revise biology from. If that is a poster for a topic, make your poster after every lesson. But I really got into a habit of every single biology lesson I had, that day I would make the resources to revise from for that lesson because even four lessons worth of biology to catch up on revision wise is a lot. Whereas if you keep up on it, it's really not too bad. So for example, if first period I have a biology lesson and then third period I have a free, that free I will probably use to make flashcards for what I've learned in that biology lesson. And say I had biology fourth and fifth and I learned a load of new content, then I would make sure I would go home, make my flashcards for those lessons. Three is I had very amazing teachers and I'm very grateful for that. I was taught by the head of biology at my school who just, she is a very inspiring woman, hugely knowledgeable when it comes to biology. And what I wanna to say to you is I think it is so incredibly important to understand as you go along and to understand there and then in a lesson because it's one thing for you to understand, but it really is another for you to need to learn it and apply it, etc. So if you don't understand in the lesson, make sure that by the end of the lesson you do. So 
put up your hand, ask the person next to you. Like I discussed a lot in biology with the girl next to me. In fact, sometimes the only way that we would come to understand a concept was by talking it out to each other. So even if the person sitting next to you, you're not, you don't really know them, well, it is time to know them. Talking about concepts really does help you understand them. So especially for me in the like genetics chapters where you have a lot of weird concepts and like, oh my God, epistasis, epigenetics, like what is going on? Discuss it until you understand it. Number four, um, something I did, which I think really helped me was most of the time I would look ahead to the next sub chapter before the lesson. Therefore I would go into the lesson with a brief understanding of some of the new words just so that I wasn't encountering them for the first time. And I think for biology, this is hugely important because so much of it is about the words and like learning it, wrote learning it, you know? So if I've tried to understand it at home, I didn't really get it, then bam, I've got a lesson where I already know my flaws within my understanding. And it just means you use the time more effectively and you use the teacher while they're there. Five, in my experience of biology, it is one thing to understand biology. It is another thing to know the content, to have learnt it. It is yet another thing to get the marks. And that is why biology is so difficult. Because it, because it is so hard to know what is on that mark scheme. Even if you feel you've understood the question, even if you feel like you have great knowledge of that, that topic, you might not get the marks and most of the time you probably won't. And that is just something that you have to come to grips with and try and tackle head on because it's often like you need to say it in a very specific way to get the mark and you cannot be vague. You need to be as specific as possible. Use the terminology, which brings me on to my next point, which is blurting, blur, blur, blur. If you've not already seen my video on that, I will link it in the description below. But in essence, it is you take a chapter or for biology, it's so dense. Maybe you can't even take a whole chapter. Um, you take like a sub chapter or a few sub chapters within the biology chapter and you give yourself some headings just to give you some prompts. And then using no notes, using no flashcards, nothing, you write down, you blurt out everything you can remember from that chapter, any key points you know, etc. And then you compare it to your notes and you fill in the blanks, you see what you didn't remember, you see what you didn't know. And I think it really proves whether you understand something enough if you can just write it out. Because if you feel like you understand it, but you can't actually explain it and write it out, then odds are you don't really know it. And this also really helps for just nailing the way that it needs to be said. Because if you're blurting it out in very vague terms, then you probably wouldn't get a mark. And number seven, in my experience, um, past paper questions are everything. <laughs> the times where I went into an end of chapter test, and I had done no relevant past paper questions. I did badly. You could know it, you can understand it, but if you have not done the questions, then you will probably not know what they want and therefore not get the marks. Ask your school if they have a service called Exam Pro because that saved us. That our school had Exam Pro, which basically just had all the questions from all the past papers in the past. And I think you can separate them into topic. So our teacher basically was like, here are some questions from, that are all relevant to chapter seven from past paper questions. And then before a test, I would do all of those, even if it was a wad of like 30 pages sometimes, I would do all the questions and that was the most important thing. Number eight, for biology, there is a real lack of good online resources. For chemistry, I feel like it is well stocked. For maths, I think it is well stocked because maths is maths. For biology, there is a lack. And I think it's partly because it's a new spec. There's tailored tutors, which is good. And I've watched a few of their videos on YouTube, but it is quite an expensive service. And I personally didn't purchase it myself. And YouTube, I feel like there's just a lack right now. I feel like people are going to make more videos in the future. I know my biology teacher's actually in the process of trying to set up her own channel um, to make videos about A-level biology. And she taught me so well. So if she does do that, then I will definitely refer you guys to her. But the fact that there are so few resources just means that your notes and your flashcards and whatever just need to 
be all that more all encompassing and just really nailing what you need to know. I always used a textbook and I would always use my class notes and kind of combine them into my flashcards and summarize, summarize, summarize because there's so much content. Number nine, number nine, why is my finger, my finger doesn't straighten. Year 13 is harder content, the definite. There is definitely a jump and the concepts are more difficult. The chapters are just harder. No longer are you learning diffusion and osmosis. You are learning genetics and osmoregulation of the kidney and all these other random topics, some of which can be quite hard to get your head around. So without question, just make sure you know the year 12 content. Like there's no way you can leave year 12 and not and feel like there are chapters you don't understand. Like please just try, 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 try and solidify year 12. 10. Um, okay, so a lot of people think that biology is an easy, an easy science out of the three sciences. And although it is very different to chemistry and physics, the A-level is in no way easy. It is hard. And from my experience and from people I know, Biology was often the one people were most worried about, even people who did chemistry and maths and physics with it, um, purely because of the nature of the mark scheme. It is laborious and hard to get marks. The application is so difficult a lot of the time. Time can be a struggle in itself. You have to be relatively quick. Revision is very time consuming because there's so much content and there is a lot of content. The maths is actually very difficult in biology as well. And in my experience, doing chemistry and doing maths as other A-levels really did help my biology. Sometimes the teacher would briefly explain some of the maths concepts in biology. And I think if I didn't have the grounding of like A-level maths, I would have struggled to pick it up a lot more. Just be confident in things like standard form, like multiplication factors to get from like millimeters to micrometers and stuff like that. Chemistry, it just helped me understand things like hydrogen bonding. And in chemistry, there was a whole topic on amino acids and protein structure, but the chemistry of it. So that really did marry quite nicely. But equally, you could do it without doing chemistry or maths. Like it's, it is possible. But in my experience, the people who did chemistry and maths alongside it generally found it easier. And lastly, um, the content is very interesting, guys. This has been quite um, almost a moany video and saying kind of all the bad points about biology, but at the end of the day, I have applied to uni for biology and that is partly because the content is so interesting. It is so often applicable to the real world and it's such a diverse subject. You don't just learn about plants. You don't just learn about the kidney. So in conclusion, I highly, highly recommend biology A-level, but only if you are willing to work hard, you don't mind maths, um, and you're relatively okay at maths, you really need to appreciate that it is a hard, hard science A-level. And a lot of people I know actually took biology just because they wanted to take a science alongside like humanities. And that is often a mistake. And they are often the ones who do not do as well because they didn't take the science actually wanting to do science or that being that interested in it. They just wanted to have a science. So only take it if you're willing to put in the work, if you enjoy it and you're kind of naturally inclined towards it. Again, that sounds harsh, but a lot of people did not even pass the A-level at my school. Um, so yes. I really hope this helped you anyway. If you would like one for maths, please give this a like. Oh. Oh, and <laughs> then please give this a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Have a wonderful and productive rest of the week. Bye.